explained in the last video is not coming from me. It's through a drop shipper. You know, one of the cons of drop shipping if someone buys something that I have in house and then something else, then it gets a little confusing, which is exactly what happened. You bought a hat and a t shirt. So now I have to physically print out the shipping stuff for the hat because I have them and then the t-shirt's being manufactured in a warehouse in California. So he's gonna be getting two different packages, which is weird because when you order stuff online, you don't expect it to be like that, right? They're gonna come on different days to him and he's gonna have two different tracking numbers. It gets a little weird, so I need to figure out a way to automate that process and make that smoother. And it's also confusing because I'm working with different apps because there's Shopify and then there's the app within Shopify, Printful, that I use for the drop shipping. So I don't know if any of this makes sense to any of you guys. I'm learning it right now myself, so it's definitely a little confusing, but it's pretty cool to see it happen for the first time. And that will actually be the first t-shirt. I don't even have a t-shirt yet, so he's gonna have the first t-shirt. I hope he likes it. I ordered three sample products for myself off the Printful, the drop shipping, just to see how they, how they are. And once I get them, they should be coming, I think, by early next week. So once I get them, I'll see if I like the products or if there's anything I want to change on the design or whatnot. It's really easy to just go in and change it on the website, so. What's cracking YouTube? It's Sunday night, like 8, 8 p.m. Means we are one hour away from Game of Thrones. Going over to my friend Steen's house to watch it on his 90 inch TV. Three rules when it comes to Game of Thrones. BYO dub, bring your own wine. Brandon's got my bottle of wine. Aged for 30 years, imported directly from Dorn. Tyrion Lannister actually made this wine. Rule number two, BYOG, Biyog, bring your own goblet. Drinking wine, it's gotta be out of goblet. Don't tell anybody, but I don't have mine. Order off Amazon, this shit's gonna be here tomorrow. It's so disrespectful. Rule number three, BYOC, BYOC, bring your own candle. Lights go down, candles go up. I tried to implement a rule number four, BYOVSS, BYOV, bring your own Valerian steel sword. That one got voted down pretty quickly though. I think it would have been fun. Excuse me. Those are the four rules, three rules. I don't even think I even like the show anymore, to be honest with you. I think I just like doing shit like this. That makes no sense, but it's really fun to do it, you know? It's like a good, it's a good atmosphere, it's a good environment. It's just like a fun thing to do on Sunday nights. So I'm pumped it's back. For all, I know a lot of you guys are probably Trones fans, so if you are, let me know what you thought about the first episode. Leave a comment down below. We can argue about something. Morning. It's Monday morning. <coughs> Incredible episode of Game of Thrones last night. Really set the tone. First scene, got me a raging throner. Make a little brekkie. Brekkie is what they call breakfast in Australia. I lived in Australia for about five or six months while I was in college. Therefore, I'm part Australian. I think that's how that works, right? I had a giant deer, like there was antlers. Those things just chill outside my house because I live like right next to a forest, basically. Not a forest, it's just the woods. I don't know why, I just called it a forest. And there's just deer just live out there, so they're just running back and forth, and like, first of all, deer suck. I don't know why, my mom gets excited every single time a deer is like outside her house. She's like, Nick, I'm like, mom, we've lived here for 15 years, I've seen all the deers. Stop calling my name when you see one. Second off, for those who haven't been to Australia, kangaroos suck. They are the Australian version of deers. They might even be worse, to be honest with you. They're crazy as fuck. You remember that video from a while back when that dude came out and punched the kangaroo? Kangaroos are assholes. They hop around and they just, they're like ugly as shit and they're like looking at you. It's out of control. I don't know what I'm even talking about anymore. For breakfast, normally I don't even eat breakfast. I'm pretty good with like one or two cups of black coffee and that'll put me through until like one or two o'clock in the afternoon when I eat a big ass lunch or I wait till dinner or something like that. I'm a little bit hungry, so I'm gonna start off uh, some egg whites, well, it's egg substitutes. Same shit as egg whites, it's basically straight protein, but it actually tastes better, and they're yellow. So I'm gonna cook some of that up in the pan. And what I do while I'm on this diet, last episode I was talking about how I was gonna start a diet for the Cali trip and how I track 2,300 calories, 165 grams of protein. Basically, you just get a food scale. You measure your food when you're, when you're weighing it out, whether it be fruit, whether it be the egg whites or whatever, and then based on the nutrition facts, and it tells you on there what a serving size is, Weigh it out and then you use an app like MyFitnessPal and you could track everything in there. You could look up the food that you're doing or they have an option where you could literally 
put your phone up and scan the barcode and that food will pop up and then you put however many serving sizes you did or whatever weight that you weighed it out as. And that's how you would track your food when you're on a cut like this. So I'm gonna make some eggs. I might make a little sandwich, put it on here. If you're eating foods, if you're trying to track and you're eating foods that like, for instance, this is just from like the bakery, right? Like it was made at, at ShopRite or whatever. It doesn't have nutrition facts on it. Choose your best judgment. You type in like small, roll on my fitness pal and if it pops up dinner roll panera bread right and if you think that like this looks like the size of a panera bread dinner roll then they're probably about the same amount of calories don't freak out about shit that you can't track worst case scenario maybe it's like 20 calories off of what the panera bread dinner roll was in the grand scheme of things that's not gonna make the slightest bit of difference so don't freak out about estimating don't freak out about small stuff like that because you know as long as you stay consistent you'll be fine with everything i just got back from the gym i did a shoulders and chest workout i'll get more into my workout split tomorrow and get a and get a like a full session of workout footage and stuff like that right now what i'm doing i'm just relaxing and i'm watching on hbo go this new series that just came out called the defiant ones <laughs> It's like the story of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, who's like a legendary music exec, and basically like their come up and stuff, and it's awesome. People are interviewed like, it's it's Dre, it's Jimmy Iovine, um, Bruce Springsteen, like all these like popular music artists that Jimmy worked with back in the day. It's like really, really cool. I think it's a four episode series. I ran to Chipotle after the gym, got me a bowl, double salsa, double fajita veggies, chicken and steak, so double meat, brown rice, pinto beans. You can get double anything except for meat and uh, guac for free. So you can get double, or you can get five scoops of rice if you want. They literally will give it to you. I suggest loading up on, on like the salsa and the fajita veggies because obviously like vegetables are low calorie, so they fill up the bowl, they fill you up a lot more. So this whole bowl is probably around 800 calories and like 60 to 70 grams of protein, a lot of meat in there. So this is the first thing I'm eating all day. It's like 2.30, like I said, I already worked out. So I'm feeling good, I'm gonna chill, watch this, and then probably work on that fantasy football like draft guide magazine thing I was mentioning a few weeks back. I wanna get that done by like early, mid-August. Wednesday, July 19th. Saw that way in 162.6. Let me get some light going on in here. Check out these blinds I have. They just like, you just pull them down and sit wherever it's epic. Let's get some light in here. Let's not be a little gremlin for the day. Let's check out my weigh-ins so far. You can see we started at 163.8. Those are my weigh-ins. I like to get the average for the week. Like yesterday was the seven day mark. Average was 162.9. So that first week is kind of getting your, your regular weight, making sure you have your tracking in order in terms of food so you could figure out where you need to. As you can see, the weights fluctuate a lot, right? They're up and down, and that depends on a lot of things. Like if you can eat the same amount of calories day to day, but your weight's still gonna fluctuate because you might one day have foods that are really high in salt, and that's gonna make you kind of retain more water. You might, you know, like for me, especially because I don't work like a regular nine to five, so I don't have like breakfast and lunch and then come home, have dinner, and then I'm good. It's like, I'll eat whenever I want, so. Sometimes I will, um, sometimes I won't really eat until like six or seven at night, right? And then I'll, I'll feast for like the rest of the night. And that way I have a lot of food left in my stomach. So when I wake up the next morning, my weigh-ins are, are going to be pretty high, you know? My weight fluctuates a lot. All you have to remember is that it's over the long run, right? It might, it's going to zigzag, but eventually like it'll start, you'll see the trend line is still going down. And as long as that's happening, that's the right way. Start at 163.8 and then a week later I'm 162.6. You can do one of two things. If, if your weight stalls or if you don't think you're dropping weight quick enough, you can either lower your calories a little bit, like instead of 2,300, I could drop it to 2,200. Or you could add cardio. Cardio is just like a piece of the puzzle, right? Cardio, a lot of people think cardio is like some magic pill that's gonna help you shed shed weight. And I mean, it helps, it's just another tool. It's, it's rather than dropping your food, you could up your cardio. So what I'll do is I'll add two sessions from now on, like two sessions a week, where I'll burn 300 calories. So I'll get on a treadmill and I'll either walk or I'll run until it hits 300 calories and I'll do that twice a week. And that's just like an added variable into the equation. Everything else stays constant. That's what you gotta do. You gotta make sure everything stays constant because that way, you know, it's easy to track and it's easy to tell what you need to adjust and what's going right and what's going wrong in that way. If you start making too many changes like left and right and then some, and then stop working and you're not losing weight, then you're not really gonna be able to tell why or what you need to adjust next in order to keep losing weight. So this is my current workout split. It makes, it'll probably make no sense to you, but. 
It's an eight day split. What you wanna do is focus on the, the body parts that you're looking to bring up or the body parts that you don't wanna lose any muscle in or whatever, you know, like you have a few body parts you wanna focus on. As you can see, mine were my shoulders, my chest, like my upper chest and my legs. So I make sure throughout the split, I hit each of those twice. Like the more volume you give them, the more muscle growth they're gonna have. You can see that I have shoulders listed in there twice. You can see that I have the chest listed in there with one uh, specifically to incline. And then I have legs hit twice. So that way I hit them at least twice a week. I don't train arms. I don't care about growing my arms. I just wanna have like a solid foundation. So I do a lot of chest, I do a lot of back, and I do a lot of legs. Those are like the three foundations. I haven't done like shoulders specifically in, in probably like a year. Which is probably not good, but. Today I'm just gonna be doing, actually have cardio and pull-ups today. This is a weird combo, but I love doing, that's basically the only back exercise I do is pull-ups. I have a pretty ripped up back and I would give it all to, I would get, I don't even know if you can see it, but I'd give all the credit in the world to pull-ups. I just, you could ask Steve when he comes to the gym with me. I swear, all, all I do is he'll be like, oh, we're doing back today. We, what exercise do you want to do next? I'm like, pull-ups, pull-ups, more pull-ups overhand underhand side grip like all i do is pull-ups and i swear it's ripped the shit up out of my back so if you could do pull-ups i would suggest that be the foundation of your back workout and really really focus on using like this part of your back when you're pulling yourself up and i'll also do a full day of eating so i could show you how i hit my calories also we have our first fantasy football meeting like my league has a meeting tonight to discuss rule changes we need a new member in our league and all that stuff, so that should be good. Keep an eye out for that. All right, seven out of nine. The meeting starts at nine. I tell everyone 8.30 because if you say half hour early, people still come half hour late, thus you're on time still. Let the meeting adjourn. That was actually one of the more productive meetings we've ever had with our league. Usually it's just people not paying attention and shit and it's just yelling at each other. We got a lot of rule changes done actually though. For deciding our draft order, we're gonna do a beer pong tournament. Our payouts this year, so we do a $300 buy-in each person, so that comes out to a $3,000 pot. We're all 22, 23, 24, 25 years old, so that might not sound like a lot to some of you guys, it might sound like a lot to others, uh, but that's where we're at right now. We increase it every year. So we do 2,200 to the first place, first place winner, 600 to the second place, and then $100 for the most points in the regular season, $100 to the best record in the regular season. We always discuss our league punishment because as you know, we do the league punishment. If you missed it, you can go watch my vlog from, you'll see stand-up comedy vlog. So this year we're looking to top that. And I'm gonna put up the list of our finalists. We discuss it, we talk about it, we narrow it down and eventually get to which one we wanna do. So you can check them out right here. And the call in a bomb threat is a joke. It's not serious. We'll never actually do that, so relax. My favorite thing is you have to act as a Jehovah's Witness and walk door to door. You don't actually have to convert three people. I just put that in there like an asshole, but I think that'd be hilarious. You have to do, <laughs> you have to pretend to be Jehovah's Witness and walk walk around. The calendar shoot's pretty played out. I feel like everyone in fantasy does that. Frosted blonde hair tips. Imagine you have to go blonde tips for like a night out. That's it doesn't have to be New Year's Eve, but like a night a night that we all go out. It'd be great. The only problem is we have like three people in our league who are blonde and you wouldn't really tell. And then the other half of the league has girlfriends, so it's not like they would really care. Be a bathroom attendant in a bar for a night. That's that's epic. <laughs> you just go in there with like napkins and have to stand there for like hours. So that's our list and that's really, that's gonna wrap up this video. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys an insight because a lot of a lot of people throughout the summer ask when when our live draft is. It's almost like one of my vlogs, but just for strictly fantasy football season and our draft. We've always done the draft in one of my league members, his aunt like owns a law firm. So she lets us go in there and, and use the war room. But one of my buddies just moved into a new house. They just redid the basement. It's really nice and he wants to host us for the draft, which is awesome. So we're moving there. Our draft is always, always, always on Labor Day Monday. We found that that works perfectly. It's never, it's never been a problem because everyone's obviously off of work. You're done with the weekend. You know, you party all Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, everyone's home by Monday. So if you're looking for a way to like make sure that you guys can all get there, it's always Labor Day Monday always works. So that's that. And I uh, hope y'all enjoy this video and give it a thumbs up if you did. 
You have to see it when nobody else sees it. You have to feel it when it's not tangible. You have to believe it when you cannot see it. You gotta be possessed with the dream. The dream. Yeah. Any weapon formed against us shall not prosper. Young niggas.